Hey there, curious minds. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the realm of truth and freedom. Today we are diving into a recent chat between Piers Morgan and Andrew Tate, where things got pretty interesting. So as tensions rise in the Middle East, the conversation around it often becomes a binary clash of good versus evil. Andrew Tate, a guy advocating for shades of grey and nuance in a world that seems increasingly black and white. In their recent chat, Tate held his ground on the escalating events in the Middle East, prompting some raised eyebrows, regardless of your stance on Tate, whether you are a fan or a critic, the discussion brings up some thought-provoking points. Our cultured space has seen a shift in recent years, more division, loathing, censorship and cancellations. How does Andrew Tate navigate this conversation? That's the question. Watch and decide for yourself. The Times of Israel weighed in, discussing Netanyahu's policies and suggesting deep state interests within Israel. It's a complicated political situation, to say the least. Now let's get personal for a moment. Terrorism, violence against civilians, it's all about abhorrent. Navigating through these complexities is tough, but we must try together. Respect for diverse opinions is crucial. Considering the deep allegiances tied to this issue, changing minds on topics like Judaism, Israel, Zionism, Islam or Palestine is challenging. Tampering with people's feelings is a no-go yet. We need a way to discuss this issue without ruling out the possibility of a peaceful solution. Do we? Share your thoughts in the comments. Let's delve into this conversation together. I want to turn to the war between Israel and Hamas in, in Gaza. What is your view of this war? I think when you call it a war, you're doing a disservice to the people who are having their limbs blown off by some of the most advanced technical weaponry on the planet. It is a genocide and it is disgusting. And it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum you fall on. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be disgusted. Which side is waging genocide? The Israelis are genociding the Palestinians and you know it as well as everybody else does. I don't know does. that. Well, then it seems like your bosses are not allowing you to know it. What perhaps. do you think of, of what Hamas did on October the 7th? Why are you starting the story in the middle, I Pierce? didn't. I just asked you about the wider war. The situation in Israel and Palestine territories, so imagine a nation going through a tough time. Like both Israel and the Palestinian people are right now. It's like trying to unwrap a mystery because, honestly, the whole thing is pretty complex. Here's the scoop. In politics, things can get a bit messy, right? It's like a chess game where moves aren't always what they seem. Allegedly, there's talk about supporting certain groups to create tension and division. Now supporting radical republicans in elections is different from supporting Hamas. But that's what some are saying happened. And get this, there's a belief that destabilizing the region, especially places like Gaza and the West Bank, is benefiting certain political interests in Israel. But hold up, it's super important not to lump the entire nation of Israel together. It's a diverse place with millions of people, each with their own beliefs, just like in the United States, where there are elites and establishment interests that, according to these claims, act in surprising ways that are raising eyebrows. Oh, and they are talking about the Israeli government's budget in all of this too. It's a lot to take in, right? Let's keep the conversation going and try to make sense of it together. Share your thought in the comments below. What is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Sure, I'll answer the question professionally. I do not condone the loss of human life on either side. Mm -hmm. I think anybody doing anything which directly damages civilians is disgusting and abhorrent. However, I would be an amateur if I could not sit and pretend I do not understand the motivations behind either side. This is not even me taking a side. I understand why Israel is doing what it's doing. I understand why Palestine is doing what it's doing. However, I still call the Israeli actions absolutely abhorrent and genocidal. Okay, we're going to come to Israel's actions, I promise you. We will ask that question specifically. But in terms of what Hamas did on October the 7th, do you accept that was an act of terrorism? It's an interesting question because... Once it's not again, really. It is. It's no, a it very straightforward question. Because you're the person who would have called Nelson Mandela a terrorist while he was still in jail. And one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. I wouldn't For have me to answer that. the question... Yes, you would have. So, the world is changing fast, right? Culture is moving quicker than ever. And we need to keep up with it. Now, I personally don't find it difficult to call massacres and kidnappings acts of terror. But there's a twist. We should also look at where these things come from says Andrew Tate. He thinks there's a starting point to even the worst events. Piers Morgan says there's no justification for such acts. But then Andrew Tate throws in a curveball. He asks Piers to think about it on a personal level. 
Imagine you lost family members or had your house blown up. How would you say things then? It's a question we all ponder. Speaking of sensitivity, especially when it comes to protecting family, is crucial. But, and here's a big but, outside of this issue, those in power can label their enemies as terrorists while justifying their own actions. Tricky, right? Even when talking about the horrible events on October 7th, it gets graphic. Think about it. 2,000 bombs on a city. That's still brutal and disgusting. And it shares a story about a 15-year-old girl losing her legs, bringing us to the same kind of awful situation. Now here's the kicker. If we ever want a solution, maybe we need to shift our perspective. Perhaps we should just say all violence is wrong. Whether it's a big drama or not, it's a bit like discussing American politics. If you are against violence, you've got to be against all of it. So how about a ceasefire and claiming things down? That should be a top priority of the world's political leaders. What's your take on all this? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Take care. We'll see you in the next video.